Hey guys, welcome to Fetch a Cruel Reading. I'm gonna continue Weirdo Halloween. Yes. I'm also gonna continue other books, but the books that got way more views, I will be continuing them way more. But don't forget to subscribe to this channel, Weirdo Halloween. So, everybody, I got 100 views on the hard tone, and everybody seemed to like it. But now I'm going to do part 3 of Weirdo, no. But basically part 1 or part 2 of Weirdo Halloween. It's fine if you like found a different playlist of the hard tone because I was late. It's fine, I was just a little upset. I'm like, they really want to see it, they can't, they don't have to exactly wait. They don't have to exactly wait. So yeah, there you go. And now I'm going to read the description first. Be careful what you wish for. Hey, everybody. Can you please do me a favor and check out Minecraft and Fruit Loops? Ooh, and check out the Deadly Boker series. I think... Real quick. I will only talk from now on in the beginning of the video for as long as I'm talking. I mean, the rest of the video is just me reading the book. Be fine if you want to, but let me just tell you this. Please check out the Daily Boker series that... Fruit Loops made, only she made it, and it's awesome. I it's also really it's good to watch when you're sl it's good to watch when you're sleeping too. So yeah, these are my feet. Don't throw it. Oops. <clears throat> because it's super calming, but probably if you're like six or like three, do not watch the newest episode of it. Do not watch episode seven of it. Because episode 7 is a Halloween. Well, not meant to be Halloween. It was just about someone breaking into a house called a break it. Yeah, let's get into this video. The switch. Tad was when... Das, that was when Tad knew. The switch. For jail with love. Beautiful World Chapter Beautiful World The white Rolls Royce made no sound as it sped along the twisting country road. It was the middle of summer and the grass was high, speckled with wild poppies and daisies. Sunlight danced in the air, but the single passenger in the back of the car saw none of it. His head was buried in the book. My 100 favorite equations. As he flicked the page, he popped another cherry, mousy pan chocolate into his mouth. The 14th he had eaten since Ipswich. The automatic window slid open and he... Hold on. Word. You don't know what it means? Stood up. The automatic window slid open and yet another chocolate wrapper was whipped away by the wind. It twisted briefly in the air then fell. By the time it hit the ground, the rose was already out of sight. And Thomas Arnold David Spencer was a little nearer home. Thomas Arnold David, the had for short, was 13 years old, dressed in a gray trousers that were a little too tight for him, a striped tie and blue blazer. He had short black hair, ra rather too neatly combed, and deep brown eyes. He was returning home from Baton Academy on this, the first day of summer vacation. It was typical of Tad that he should have studied, he should have st started his homework already. Tad loved homework. He was only sorry he hadn't, he hadn't been given more. The Rolls Royce paused in front of a set of wrought iron gates. There was a click and the gates began to open automatically. At the same time, a video camera sat on a high brick wall swiveled around to watch the new arrival with a blank, hostile eye. <sighs> Beyond the gates, a long drive stretched out for almost half a mile between lawns that had been rolled perfectly flat. Two swans circled on a glistening pond, watching the rose as it continued forward. It passed a rose garden, vegetable garden, a croaking lawn, a tennis court, and a heated swimming pool. At last, it stopped in front of the fantastic pile that was Snatchmore Hall, home of the Spencer family. Tad had arrived. The ugly man with hooded eyes crumbled her cheeks in the small snub nose got out of the car and held the door open for Tad. 
Gotta be home, Master Spencer. Yes, thank you, Spolink. Tad's voice was flat, almost emotionless, rather. Oh, six minutes when we open. I'll take your suitcases to your room, Master Spencer. Thank you, Spolin. Just leave them on the bed. Tad went over to the swimming pool where a boarded, bored looked, looking woman, woman was lying on a sun lounger. Alright, let's get back to the story. Bored looking woman was lying on a sun lounger, gazing at herself and Intently in a small meal. This was his mother, Lady Gornum Spencer. Good afternoon, mother, Todd said. He knew not to kiss her. It would have ruined her makeup. Oh, hello, dear, his mother sighed. Is it vacation already? Yes. Oh, I thought it was next week. What do you think of the nose? It's jolly good, mother. They've moved it a little, haven't they? Yes, it's just, just a teensy weensy bit to the left. Lady Spencer had visited no fewer than six plastic surgeons that spring and each one of them had operated on her nose, trying to give her the exact look she required. Now she was sure she had at last gotten it right. The only trouble was that she wasn't allowed to sneeze until Christmas. How was school, darling? She asked, putting her mirror away. It was fine, thank you, mother. I had the highest grade in class in French, English, chemistry, math, and Latin. Second, ancient Greek and geography. Third, and ah, he was messy with the tea. His mother interrupted, stifling a yawn. Just what I fancied, a teensy wincy tea. The front door of the house had opened, and a trolley, piled high with cakes and sandwiches, had appeared, seemingly moving by itself. As it drew closer, however, a tiny woman could be seen behind it, wearing a black dress with a white apron. This was Bitsy, the family servant for the past 40 years. Hello, Master Tad. She gurgled breathlessly as, as she heaved the trolley to a halt. It was so heavy, it had left teep tire tracks across the lawn. Hello, Bitsy. Tad smiled at her. How are you? I can't complain, Master Tad. And Bitsy? This was Bitsy's husband. His real name was Honest, but he had given... His nickname after he'd been blown to pieces by a faulty gas main. He's still in a hospital, Bitsy sighed. I'm seeing him on Sunday. Well, do you, do you give him my regards? Tad said cheerfully, helping himself to a smoked salmon roll. Bitsy limped back to the house while Tad ate. Lady Spencer cast a critical eye at her son. Have you put out weight? she asked. Just a little, Mumsy. I'm afraid you're going to have to buy me a completely new uniform for next time. This one's much too tight. What a boy. Those th that's the thought of this year. I know. The last I got my underpants strapped during the headmaster's speech. It was rather embarrassing. Just then there was a loud bark and a dog bounced across the lawn to what Tad and his brother. It was a Dalmatian. You could easily tell that from his black and white coat, but it was like no Dalmatian you had ever seen. First out, it was huge. Its teeth were incredibly sharp in its mouth instead of grinning in a friendly way ordinary Dalmatians do. It was twisted in an ugly frown. The reason for all this was that Spencer's had taken the unfortunate dog to a fair who had turned into a killing machine. Filing both of his teeth in, in its claws until they were they were needle sharp. The last burglar who had tried to break in had and had needed needed one hundred and seven stitches when fishes had finished with him. In the end, the police sergeant had run out of thread and had been forced to use glue. But fishes recognized Tad. Panting, whimpering, the dog sat down and raised a paw, his eyes fixed on the tea trolley. Hello, Fishes. How are you? Tad reached out with an eclair. The dog leaped up and, and the half of Tad's arm disappeared down his throat as Fishes sucked the eclair free. You spoiled that dog, his brother remarked. After tea, Tad went up to his room, taking the elevator to the third floor. Spoiling had carried his suitcases up and Mrs. Oh, blimey, the Irish housekeeper had already unpacked them. 
Tad sat down on his full post up bed and looked around com- contently. Everything was where it should be. There, there were his two computers and 14 cells of computer games. There was his portable television plugged into his own, plugged into his own video recorder and s- satellite system. Save of books, Dickens and Shakespeare, bound in leather and gold, stretched out in a long line over his but- butterfly collection, his stereo and interactive CD system, and his tank of rare tropical fish. Then there were nine closets containing his clothes, and next to them, a door leading into his private bathroom, sauna and jacuzzi. Tessa saw his arms and smiled. He had a whole summer vacation to look forward to, as well as well as the country house and Suffolk. There was the there was the villa in the south of France, the penthouse in New York, and the Muse House in Knight Knightsbridge, just around the corner from Harrods. He unbuttoned his jacket and took it off, letting it fall to the floor. Mrs. O'Blimey could pick it up later. It was time for dinner, and soon his father would be home. In fact, Sir Hubbard Spencer didn't get in till after 9 o'clock. He was a large, imposing man with wavy silver hair and purple bl- blotches on his cheeks, nose, and hands. He was dressed, as always, in a plain black suit cut from, a, cut from the very finest material. As he strolled into the room and sat down, he pulled out an antique pocket watch and glanced at the face. Good evening, Tad, he said. Good to see you. Now, I can give you nine and a half minutes. Gosh, thank you, Father. Tad was delighted. He knew that his father was a busy man. In fact, bus- bus- busyness ruined his life. Ten years ago, Sir Hubbard Spencer had set up a chain of shops that now stretch across England, Europe, and America. Ten years ago, Sir Hubbard Spencer... The shops were called simply beautiful, wheeled in old soaps, shampoos, body lotions, sunscreen, sun creams, vitamins, minerals, herbs, and out. What made these shops special, however, was that well, was that th- was that the ingredients from many of the products came from the third world, yaks milk from the mountain villages of Tibet, for example, or crushed orchards from the tropical rainforest of Sumatra. Now the shops carried a sign in large letters in the window. None of our products are t- tested on animals. This is, they actually drew the sign. Memes. So Hopper had realized that people not only wanted to look good, they wanted to feel good too. And the better they felt, the more they would spend and, and the richer he would become. So Hopper never stopped. He was always developing new products, finding new ingredients, dreaming up new advertising ideas, selling more products. It was said that while he was being knighted by the Queen two years before, he had managed to sell her 10 gallons of face cream in a lifetime supply of Japanese seaweed shampoo. He had appeared on the front page of all the newspapers after that, because despite his great wealth, Sir Hubbard was very popular. Good old Sir Hubbard. People would sell out if they saw him in the street. He may be stinking rich, but he's alright. The reason for this popularity and also for his knighthood was his charity work. At about the same time that he had set up Beautiful World, he had started a charity called ACID. This stood for the Association for Children in Distress and was based in London. It's the idea aimed to help all the young people who had run away or been abandoned in the city, giving them shelter and providing them with, with food or clothes. Todd himself had donated two pairs of socks and a mouse bar to the charity. He was very proud of his father and dreamed of the day when maybe he would be knighted too. Sorry I'm late, Sir Hubbard announced, now as he sat himself down in his favorite armchair beside the fire with fishes caught up at his feet. We've got problems with our new Peruvian cocoa leaf bubble bath. Here is the ward right there. Peruvian says. Not enough bubbles. We may have to do more tests. He turned to Spalling, who was standing beside him. 
Have you poured me a brandy spoiling? Yes, Sir Hubbard. Have you warmed it up? Have you warmed it for me? Yes, Sir Hubbard. Well, you can drink it for me too. I haven't got I haven't got time. Suddenly, Sir Hubbard, taking the glass, the child feel bold and left the room. Sir Hubbard na turned to Tad, who was playing who was playing Scrabble with Lady Spencer. <coughs> Sir Hubbard turned to Tad, who was playing Scrabble with Lady Spencer. Tad was a little annoyed. He had a seven letter word, but unfortunately it was an it was an ancient Greek. So, Tad, he exclaimed, how was school? Jolly good, father. I got the highest grade in French, English, chemistry, math, and Latin. Second and That's the spirit, Sir Hubbard interrupted. Now, what have you got planned for the summer? Well, I was thinking about going on safari in Africa, father. Didn't you do that last summer? Yes, but it was rather fun. One of the guys got eaten by a tiger. I got some great photos. I thought you wanted to go to the Red Sea. We, we could do that afterward, father. Oh, all right. So Hubbard turned to his wife. He'd better take the boy to the and get him some tropical clothes, he said. Oh, and some scuba diving lessons. And there's one thing, father. What's that, Tad? There was a jingling sound from Sir Hubbard's top pocket, and he pulled out one of his cell phones. Could you hold the line, please, he said. I'll be with you in 93 seconds. Dad took a deep breath. Rub R Rupert said he'd come up this week. You know, he's my best friend. And we thought we might go to Maple Towers together. Maple Towers? Maple Towers? It's a new theme park that just opened. It's got an amazing new ride, the monster. Apparently, it's almost impossible to go on it without throwing up. A theme park? So how about considered? Then shook his head. No, I don't think so. What? Tad said on his father. Perhaps unsurprisingly, no was his least favorite word. No, Tad, these theme parks seem very vulgar to me. Why don't you go horse racing at Ascot? I'll do that too, father. What about flying lessons? You probably touched that two-seater plane I bought you. I will, father, but no, I don't want you going on those rides. So dangerous and no noisy, and all those people. You're just a sensitive boy, Tad. I'm sure they're not good for you. But father, mother, mother, mother. I have to agree with you, father, Lady Spencer said. She looked at her scra Scrabble letters, which she had been studying for the past ten minutes. Is Simpy a word? She asked. Tad was, Tad was in a bad mood when he went to bed, dressed in his brand new Silk pajamas, he flicked off the light and slid himself between the crispy la laundered or iris linen sheets. The trouble was that he was a boy who had everything, and he was used to having everything. He expected it. It's not fair, he muttered. His head sank back into his goose feather pillow. Moon moonlight slid across the wall and onto his pale, scowling face. Why can't I go to the theme park? Why can't I do what I want to do? Suddenly, Snatchmore Hall seemed like a prison to him. His parents, his great wealth, his school, and his surroundings were just shackles that bound him, and he wanted none of it. I wish I was somebody else, he muttered to himself. 127 million light years away, a star that had been burning was suddenly glowed green, just a few seconds before burning white again. But Thomas Arnold David Spencer hadn't seen it. He was already asleep. You know, only on page 10, but it seems like it's taking Ryo. Like, that's how it's naturally taking. Because when I made up, I did the same video, but it didn't work out. But it took as equally amount as long as this. So. Maybe it's... I don't know. I'm confused. It could be like the content of the book. Maybe I'm just like not used to saying, speaking like this, so it's, yeah, bye.